Hello, this is Greg Deckler for Enterprise DNA. In today's video, we're going to be talking about due dates, but not just any due dates. Due dates where you basically start with a start date and then you have a number of working days and you need to calculate the due date based on working days only, so excluding weekends. Well, we're going to be taking a look at this in two capacities. We're going to be using the same logic, same basic logic, uh, to create a DAX calculated column to calculate the due date. And we're also going to create a, use the same logic in Power Query to create a Power Query function so that we can use that to create a, a column in Power Query to calculate the due date. So you're kind of seeing the finished product here, but I'm going to step through uh, each, of this, uh, each of these calculations uh, step by step. And uh, one last thing about these due dates is that we don't want to count uh, the, the start date as one of the working days, right? So if we have a start date that it starts on a Friday, then and we have a due date of one, then it should the due date should be the next Monday. And that's actually this example right here in this last row. OK, so let's take a look at how to do this in DAX. So this is the DAX due date calculation. And I'm going to step through this. So I start out by getting the work days, so the number of working days uh, that we want to that we want to calculate you know, from the start date. Um, and we put that in a variable called underscore underscore days. And we, you can see there that I multiply by four. Now, I'll get back to that in just a second, but there's, it's not just a random multiplication of, of some number. There's a, there's a method behind the madness. Um, the next thing we do is we create a calendar table, virtual table, using uh, our calendar function. So you can see that in, the, uh, in line six. So we're creating a calendar table, and we're using our start date column, plus one, because we don't want to count the start date as one of our working days. And then we take our, and when the end of that calendar is the start date, plus the days variable from before. So essentially, so for example, in the first row, we have work days of 12. It means our, our days variable is going to be 48. Uh, in, the, in the second row, it's going to be 40. And in the third row, it's going to be four. Um, now, what we do then is we use add columns to add a weekday column, where we use weekday with critically, we use the two as the second parameter for that. Um, so what that does is that starts the week on Monday is one, and then Friday would be five, Saturday would be six, Sunday would be seven. Um, so then what we can do is we can filter that uh, to where the weekday is less than six. So now we only have working days in that table, that calendar table. Now, again, this is where the times four comes into, into play. So for example, in the last row, we have Friday, March 31st, so in order to get the right number of days in uh, in within our calendar table, we that's where the four comes in because that ensures that we're that the next Monday is included within our calendar table. Okay, so the next thing we do is we add another we create another table bar called table, and we add use add columns again to add to our calendar table. We add an index where essentially we're counting the rows where we filter the calendar table where the date is less than or equal to earlier the date, so the, the date in context. So we could have used a var there instead of using earlier. We could have said var, you know, and made up some variable name equals date, and then use that var instead of earlier. But, you know, it makes it a little bit more messy, and, um, and I, I just kind of tend to like to use earlier. Uh, either way, you want to do it. So now the last thing we do is we, for the result, we grab the max x, where xx of where we filter that table where the index equals the number of work days in our column. So if you think about what's going on here, you essentially are creating a calendar table with a bunch of dates out into the future. You're removing out the weekdays, the weekends, and then you're indexing it. And so now whatever the index is, is going to be equivalent to your work days. That's going to be the date that you want to return. So then we're returning the date column. And as you can see here, we exit out of this. So, so for example, Sunday, January 1st, you know, comes out to be Tuesday, January 17th. And you can go to your calendar and you can prove to yourself that, yes, that is 12 working days out. Um, and then Wednesday, March 1st becomes Wednesday, Wednesday, March 15th is 10 working days out. And that makes sense, right? Wednesday to Wednesday. Then here we have Friday, March 31st with one working day. And that becomes the next Monday. Okay, so our calculation works. 
But now let's see what, what we can do in terms of Power Query. If we wanted to do this, create the same column in Power Query. So what I've done here is I've created a function called Workdays Add. And then what I can do, this due date in Power Query, as you can see here, add in my custom column. And the formula for this is I call Workdays Add and I pass it my start date in my Workdays those columns as parameters. All right, so let's take a closer look at the workday add function. I'll bring up the advanced editor. And you can see that this is going to be essentially the exact same logic as what we did before. Only we have to use Power Query functions instead of DAX. Uh, so it's maybe a little longer. Uh, what we do, so you can see at the top, the first row, you can see the workday add equals start as date, workdays as number. Those are my two parameters that I'm going to be passing into my function. And then the function is going to return a date. So that's the last as date. And then we have the equals and then greater than sign. So that now we're defining our function. So the first step is the source step, source equals. And we're using list.generate here. And you can see to as far as what we want to end date in, the, in our list, we use date.adds of our start parameter. And then we do the same thing that we did in DAX, right? We take our work days times four. So that's going to be the end that we're going to uh, calculate. And then the starting point is going to be our add day, date, add day start, and then one. So, right, so we're excluding our start date as one of our working days. And then each is going to be, you know, as an increment, as in, in terms of the list.generate function, we're going to use date.add days and then minus one, right? So, we're going to start, you know, we have our starting point, our ending point, and we're going to, how we're going to get there. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to convert that table to a list. So we use the table.fromList function with pretty much just basic, you know, um, parameters in it, and it converts that, flips that from a table to a list. The next step, we're going to add a custom column, which for our weekday, similar to what we did in DAX. So we're going to take our converted table, we're going to add a column called weekday, and it's going to be each for each row, it's going to calculate the date dot day of week, um, column one which is the column that we have that list.generate and when we convert it to a table that's so the only column is basically a column one of a bunch of dates and again we're going to start our week on monday now the next step is to filter out the weekends now things are numbered a little bit different in power query and dax when you do weekdays uh you know you get a number between one and seven with power query you get a number between zero and six so what we can do here then, the next filter row, filtered rows, what we're doing is we're selecting our rows where the weekday is less than five. So that's gonna exclude Saturdays and Sundays. Now, crucially, we have to sort this table uh, because of the way we did the list.generate in that. Um, we need to get this and make sure that this is sorted from the, the minimum date to the maximum date so that we can then add our index. We use add index column where we do our sort table, we add our it, a column called index, we increments of, we start at one, increments of one, um, so that's going to give us an index, uh, and again, since it's sorted, then the smallest date will be an index of one, and the largest date will be whatever, you know, however many rows there are in that table. So now what we can do is we can, again, as we did in DAX, we say, okay, let's select the row where the index is equal to the work days that was passed in as a parameter, same exact logic. And the last thing we just need to do is just to try to extract out that scalar value. So the way I'm doing that is I do a select columns where I filtered rows, and I just grab my column one, right? It's a one row table anyway at that point. And then I can do a, I can do a table max on that and then a record dot field to return that column is essentially a scalar value instead of a table. And I can return that result and then, you know, end my function. Okay. So again, we can see how that works here. So for example, if I was to type in 1-1-2023 and a work, working days of 12, and I invoke that, as you can see, I come back with 1-17-2023, which is exactly what the DAX function returned. And you can see that in the table here in terms of we get the exact same results. So Tuesday, January 17th, we also get Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Wednesday, March 15th, Wednesday, March 15th, Monday, April 3rd, Monday, April 3rd. So using the same logic implemented in DAX as well as in Power Query, 
That is one way of calculating out uh, a due date using just the working days. Um, so it's a little more complicated than you know just adding 12, adding your days to it, um, but not too bad. Hope you learned something in this video, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.